there's an old story of a young girl who lived with her dad really old story but yeah it doesn't seem from that long ago she lived with her father off the west coast of Scotland in a wee house not too far from the sea she's quite a lonely child her father didn't really know how to love her very well sometimes he was playful but he's mostly quite bitter and nasty and didn't really have time to listen to her and as she grew older the arguments got worse and he got less patient with her. One day they were out for a walk. They were out picking the heather, out picking the thyme, out picking the mushrooms. And then suddenly out of nowhere, he shoved her. He shoved her off the cliff edge and she crashed onto the, sh onto the sea and she drowned. He drowned her, he killed her. Her body floated slowly sadly all the way down into the bottom of the sea and there she lay dead the fish they came to eat her skin they came to eat her eyes came to gnaw on her fingers and her toes until she was completely gone and her bones start to grow blue and rotten nobody ever knew why he pushed her to her death but anyway Years and years later, nobody would fish those waters. But one day, a fisherman came and he could see that there were really good fishing at this spot. So he went out there, he took his boat, he took his buckets, he took his food for the day and he sat there. The ocean was quite still. He sat there and he got buckets and bucket loads of fish. He'd never heard of the cursed waters. And then just at the very end of the day, just before he thought it's about time to go home, his line started to pull and it pulled hard and he thought, oh yes, it was worth the wait. Oh my God, this is going to be a big fish. And he started to reel it in and it was such a wrestle. He had such a time with it. He nearly even gave up at one point. He was sweating. He was out of breath, panting and he kept pulling, he kept pulling. And just at the last moment when he thought the line was going to snap, out came this tangled mess of bones and skull and tangled black hair and he lay back ice cold and he just started to roll he didn't even look back he tried to then stop and untangle and try and cut his line but he couldn't and he just needed to get into the shore and he rode and he rode and he rode and he kept going all the way back in he turned around at the last minute and standing up on the waters was her bones all tangled in a mess just staring at him with her toes dragging along the water. So he didn't look back again and he kept on rowing and rowing until he got into the shoreline, into the bay, and he didn't even pull his boat up the sand and the pebbles. And he ran into the house and slammed the door. Out of breath. So much noise in his head. Feeling safe. He turned on the gas lamp and there she was, sat in the chair across the room. He sat still just to watch what she'd do. And she sat still in return. He was terrified, but he couldn't move. And there was something that was unusually encapsulating, like enticing, curious about paleness of her bones, about what her story was, and why she was lay at the bottom of the sea. And he sat there and he looked at her and he wondered what her life was like, he wondered what her death was like, he wondered how long she'd been there. And then he began to feel sorry for her because maybe once she was had a lot of stories to tell and maybe she needed to be honoured even in her death. So he walked over to her and he started to untangle her bones. Her heel was wedged in between her shoulder and her collarbone. And he just slowly managed to untuck it and lay it back into place. Her spine was all twisted with her pelvis and he just managed to help her back into the right place, taking her elbow out of her ribs, laying her hands flat 
rocking our knees all back into position and our foot untwisted the right way. And then he sat back down next to the gas lamp, just watching, and he felt slightly warm and quite peaceful. And in that peace, he shut his eyes and he drifted off to sleep. And there she sat watching him, watching him sleep peacefully. And she watched with such longing to have flesh, to be alive again. Oh, how beautiful it looked. Oh, how she remembers. Oh, how she wished she could know what it would, to be, would be like to be alive for, for more years. And as she watched, she saw this most beautiful tear just well up around his eye and fill into a beautiful teardrop and slowly begin to trickle down his cheekbone. And suddenly she got thirsty like she'd never known what water was. And she got up from the chair and she walked across towards the light and she drank that tear. And when she drank, she didn't know how thirsty she was. It was like she drank all of the streams, all of the rivers and all of the seas all at once. And it felt like she could breathe again. And there she stood and she watched his chest and she watched it rise and she watched it fall. And as she watched even closer, she could see his heart beating gently, peacefully, slowly. And without even thinking, she reached into his chest to hold his heart. She reached in and she held it and nourished it and respected it in honour. And with each beat, she could feel a beating in her chest. She could feel organs moving inside her again. She could feel blood pumping around. And then she could breathe through her lungs again. And as he woke, he saw this beautiful figure standing over him. And he felt so much love and care and respect and honour for her gentleness. And she could feel that too, that she was seen in her death and in her rotten body and her blue mouldy bones and her pearly white skull, that he could see beauty. And she leant down and kissed him. And bit by bit, flesh came back with his pulsing, pulsing, pulsing. Bit by bit, all of the hairs on her arms and her legs and her face and her head came back to life. And she felt loved and she felt held and she felt whole again and she felt seen. Hmm. And there she he took her to be warm and cosy in his big duck down feather bed. And there they lay, arms in each other's arms for the rest of eternity.